how to build and manage an effective YouTube team. I know you want to put together a YouTube team that is going to be delivering the results that you want as an entrepreneur or business owner. You want to generate more email leads for your business. You want to grow your business, get more clients. When you start your channel, you want to get more subscribers, more views, more eyeballs, more attention, all of that. But for that, for getting to those results, you know that you need to put together a very high level, A level type of team. And in this video, I'll provide to you a few insights on how to build that team and how to manage that team. Those insights simply come from our experience over the last three years after managing a team of 12 people at Hex Studio, which is my company that is a YouTube organic marketing company. So anyway, having said that, let's not waste any more time. First thing is that on another video on how to be consistent on YouTube that I recorded a few months ago, I talk about the three type of key roles that you need to create your YouTube team. Those three roles are the video editor, the graphic designer, and the YouTube strategist. Having said that, there's like this book, High Output Management from Andrew Groove, in which they have a very important quote regarding managing a team. The quote says, a manager's output is equal to the total output of his organization plus the output of the neighboring organizations under his influence. Now, what does this mean for people like you and me as the managers of YouTube teams? This means the following. The better the manager, the higher slash better is going to be the output, right? Or in other words, the main role of you and me as the managers of a YouTube team is simply improving the team's output, the team's performance. So the question is, or the question becomes, how can we accomplish this? There is two ways. The first one comes down more to building, very straightforward, very simply. And the building side of things is by ensuring you have a competent or you have competent team members. Sounds super simple, yet this is the problem or the challenge for a lot of people. They try to put together a team of BAs, a team of freelancers from Fiverr, a team of just part-time people that are not committed to your business from Upwork, and the results ultimately don't show. So for this first point of building, that is by ensuring you have a competent, that you have competent team members, what do we need to do? Fire underperformers in case that you already have a team and hire new overperformers. Now, how can we define what is an overperformer? If we go back to this like book, High Output Management, there's a very interesting concept regarding task relevant experienced people. What does this mean? That if someone, for example, is a great video editor, great, they have been editing for a decade, they have been in TV commercials, in advertisements, in all of these things, but they do not have experience specifically related YouTube, specifically related to the style that you're looking for, they are probably not going to be overperformers. They are probably not the type of people that you want to hire. You want to hire people that already have plenty of experience that is task relevant. A YouTube strategist, someone that has been working as a YouTube strategist for channels with proven results for years. A graphic designer, again, someone that has been doing thumbnails specifically for multiple, multiple years with big channels or the channels that you want to emulate or, or take inspiration from. Video editor, same thing. So this is very important for that building aspect. Now, what is the second way? The second way is more on the management side of things, on the managing of that team. Now, this second point is specifically by influencing the individual behavior of team members. And there are, again, two ways for this influence of the behaviors of your team members. Let's review them. First one is through motivation. And second one is through training. Now, let's review them one by one. For motivation, very simple. Here, I want to do a comment that is, I think is very important. Usually, we as managers or business owners, we tend to overlook this, right? We think that motivation is simply words of encouragement. That is a part of it, but we think that that is it. Showing care, showing appreciation for our team members, all of that. But motivation, as a theory of management, if you look at it from the biggest guys in the world, these guys that are managing corporations of hundreds of thousands of people, it's a big part of their strategy. It's a big part of the leverage that they know they have into their organizations to achieve the results that they want. Why? Because if you think about it, simply like small actions that you can take and the tools that we will be discussing and reviewing in a little bit, small implementations of these can influence hours and hours and hours of everyone on your team. Let me give you an example. If you do a meeting in which you motivate your team, 
you do it in a way that is effective, in a way that is custom and specialized for each of the team members. You only invested one hour of your time to motivate the three hires from your team. And that hour of motivation is going to have an impact on their whole week, at least. Now, let's say that they're working 40 hours per week with you. That's 120 hours of total output of the team that you are influencing simply by one hour of your time into that motivation session. So it's extremely, extremely important to learn and understand what is truly the results of each of these like mechanisms of motivation and training. Now, let's review some other mechanisms of motivation. So we discussed already like that motivation sessions. Besides that are the monetary incentive plans. So let's say that if your team hits certain KPIs, they are going to be getting extra bonuses. You know that you have heard about it, but chances are that you are not implementing it right now. And remember that what gets you the result is not knowing the information, it's implementing it. So this is my invite to you to implement it if you don't have it in place right now for your YouTube team as a source of motivation for them. Now, what is our thing? Incentivizing competition. The simple fact that your team knows that is competing with maybe other organizations, other creators, or even within themselves in a healthy way is a source of motivation. Remember, motivation is simply like that sense or feeling that pushes you to go the extra mile or to do something, to act. So we want to incorporate as many of these mechanisms within our team to lead or to manage effective YouTube teams. So monetary incentives, incentivizing competition, of course, words of encouragement, the thank you, the I appreciate your work, the being genuine, providing feedback and providing, just expressing how grateful you are for the work that each of your team members is doing, the group or one-on-one -on -one meetings, as I was mentioning to you guys earlier, you can talk about, for example, the vision with your channel, the mission, the culture that you are trying to, to create, the values that you are trying to incorporate or to push through the team, the type of impact that you want to have with your channel, with your products. Those type of things give a sense of meaning to the work that they are doing, to the work that your YouTube team is doing. So that is a huge source of motivation that I consider you should have into consideration as well. Besides that, proper goal setting. So having clear goals, having clear KPIs, this is also a source of motivation, a source of, hey, I need to move to get to this point, right? That's a clear direction. That's a source of motivation. So anyway, these are just a few of the tools or mechanisms for motivating your team. Now, what is another way of managing your team, of improving as a manager that performance of your YouTube team? is by a few tools of the training category. So for the training category, a few tools are the SOPs. So if you have very clear SOPs in place, for example, Green Hex Studio, we literally have like a 52 page document with a lot, a lot of SOPs for every role. The very repetitive, but standard and important tasks are very detailed on how to do them. There's like no doubts about it, right? That's like a way of training because you know that you are removing every possible confusion from your team on how to do the job in the way that is going to be producing the results that you want. Besides that, guides. So if you can create checklists, if you can create, for example, the specific responsibilities of each of the roles, the specific expectations, for example, I don't know, just work instructions or a document in which you create long videos doing an activity that they are going to be repeating so that you teach them how to do them. All of that are basically guides that direct them or instruct them in how to do their work that is leveling up their skills that is improving their output improving their performance and on top of that of course group and one-on-one -on -one meetings so meetings about improvement on on the youtube channel er, like identifying what are those areas for improvement seeing what you guys can do differently and all of that but anyway in conclusion if you want to build and manage an effective youtube team to grow your personal brand in business, you need to hire over performers with uh, plenty of task relevant experience, as I was discussing at the beginning, and influence their behavior through motivation and training, and using the mechanisms for each of those, as we just reviewed in this video. Anyway, I'll leave like in the, in the description below the link to this document. I think that it will be great for you to have it. Maybe you can simply create a copy on this document if you want to review it by yourself. I'm sure that this will be very, very valuable to you. So I invite you to go ahead and check it out. On top of that, simply like the video if you like it. And in the next three seconds, I'll be recommending to you another video on YouTube organic marketing that I think will be super, super valuable to you. So I invite you to go ahead and check it out and I'll see you there. Bye-bye. Take care.